Well, it's my favorite time of the show. Everyone knows I'm an absolute animal lover and Bobtail gave me the opportunity to meet all sorts of incredible breeds and incredible people as well. Vanessa Monroe, thank you so much for joining us on a very early morning. I can see what an ordeal this has been for you getting these three beautiful chows into our studio. Lots of energy. Um, they are <laughs> relatively low energy. I was talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Not at this time of the day. Oh, we're we getting, we getting a nice view of the, the blue tongue there. I love that. Um, Charles, I can see the close relationship you share with, with the Charles. What makes them such a special breed for you, Vanessa? Um, uh, they are very much like cats okay. rather than, than dogs. So, so they have a much, e I personally think it's a much easier temperament to live with. Um, but there's a lot of people who are put off by the fact that they, they don't chase sticks, they don't come and run up and, and jump all over you, they don't race around. They, they're fairly calm, laid back um, dogs, but they are guard dogs, so they are very alert. I was going to say that they seem very attentive without they being are. overly affectionate. <laughs> they, they're very much a pack animal. You can see that they look after their, their own um, and very independent as well. Very independent, yes. They, they were bred <laughs> originally um, many, many, many thousands of years ago. In fact, the DNA uh, tests have shown that they are probably the original northern breed. Um, uh, from which all the spitz breeds and so on have, have, have descended. But because of their very primitive um, a, a origins, and that's actually one of the reasons why they've got the purple tongue I was going to ask, well. they're all displaying their blue tongue beautifully. Because yeah, it's, yes. it's the... It's, oh, so they're getting bored now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll try harder, guys. I'll try harder. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, the, the purple tongue and their very straight hocks, the way they move. They also have a very primitive uh, digestion. Okay. Um, one of the things that with a child is they've got a very low tolerance for protein. They can't eat a lot of meat. So when it comes to, to health, one of the things that can cause a lot of problems is eating too much red meat. Wow. So um, how, do you, how do you get around that? How do you supplement to make sure? Because they, they're very strong dogs. Well, they've I would got imagine they need the very protein large, now. good bones for, for, uh, compared to, to their size, but as most of the northern breeds do. Um, and uh, yeah, th so long as they get very good nutrition when they're young, that's... Hello, yes, and God. there's a young one there. Yes, he's a baby. He's just four months. Oh, sweet. It's quite big for a four-month-old. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, <whiz. laughs> so he's busy growing that bone that you're talking about. <laughs> now, Titus, I, I imagine, is, is king of the hill. Um, you can see that he, he, he knows his, his status. He, yeah? he is indeed. <laughs> and one of the things that you can see here is um, the child's come in five different colours. But more uh, than that, the two different coat types. Yeah. The smooth, which is Titus, and the rough, which is Zua. So Zua's got a lot more hair, and the... Um, yes, the <laughs> did, you did, you did, you did, you did, you did. So what, what is the, the key thing from your experience with the breed, um, in, for new owners, possible owners out there, what they have to prepare themselves and educate themselves on to be able to own these very unique and beautiful dogs? It's a very different um, mm, a, a, a personality type to, to the ordinary dogs. So I think for, for new owners, they've got to do a lot of research. They've got to be prepared for that um, because you can't try and judge them by normal dog standards because they, it, they're just like two different species. Um, they, they don't like to do what they're told. And, <laughs> and the history of that is that they were bred to walk, work on their own. Oh. So you'll find uh, most of the modern working breeds are, are bred to work with people. So they're very alert and they pay attention and they follow signals. The child doesn't. It makes up its own mind. It needs to walk the perimeter fence. And yeah. it needs to actually <laughs> walk the perimeter fence and make its own decisions. Um, but you'll find they're very, very good uh, uh, guard dogs. But they are not going to bark at everything that walks past. Um, they're very quiet. Discern. They tend to, to lie there sleeping, you know, eyes half closed. People think, oh, it's a teddy bear. <laughs> it's a lion um, cub. <laughs> and, and really, they, they wait until 
it's necessary. They won't move themselves for, for nothing. So a great dog for the South African environment, despite having a, a lovely thick fur. No, well, <laughs> that's a, also an Im important point. This double coat, the thick double coat, which is, is common to most of the northern breeds as well. Oh, There's right, a couple right. of things that go with that. There's obviously a lot of grooming that is yeah. required. Um, also, the, the double coat is, is a fantastic insulator against the heat as well as the cold. Oh, wow. So they don't actually suffer anywhere near as much in the heat as your very, very short-haired dogs might. Wow, so they really are the ideal South African dog. I love it. Vanessa, thank you so much. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to spend a bit of QT with these beautiful animals, especially okay. Mr. Sleepy. Yes. Uh, but they really are wonderful. Thank you so much for, for uh, you know, going through the ordeal and bringing <laughs> them in this morning, but they've been very well behaved. Well done, guys. Um, the chow. It's good to know exactly what's in store if you are going to be buying a breed of dog like the chow that does have some very specific requirements, but by the looks of it is an absolute joy to own a real adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Share the love with South Africa's most loved dog food, Bobtail, for strong South African dogs.